a catch-up video for those students who either need to review the classwork from today's lesson or who missed the class uh, from today. This lesson sets you up on Xcode and gets you introduced to um, the coding content that we're going to be covering this term. So to begin with, you should have Xcode installed version 13.3.1. And if you go to About This Mac, you should have Mac OS Monterey. Pretty much any version will work with this version of Xcode. So that's really important. So to get started, the first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to do two different projects. So I wanted to do, firstly, uh, the Swift um, storyboards. So you, you guys might have done the light project last term. It just kind of sits here. And then we're going to do a second task, which is actually the same thing again, but this time in Swift UI. And you can see the difference then in why we use Swift UI. So same app, two different ways. Um, one, the old school way that you did last year, and one, the newer, uh, more modern way with Swift UI. So the storyboard content took the class about half an hour to do, and the Swift UI content took about 15 minutes. So it's actually a lot faster and a lot more simple. So to begin with, I would like you guys to follow along. So pause the video when you need to. First thing we're going to do with Xcode is create a new Xcode project using this first top option. That's going to take a while on my Mac. It might take a little while on yours too. And then we get a nice little window pops up. And we're going to need to select, so it might be on multi-platform, but you need to make sure you're on iOS and you select app. There are other app types. You'll notice there's a document in the game and some augmented reality, all kinds of fun things. A lot of this is exactly the same as your basic app, but it has some preloaded content. And the reason we don't use them is because they have so much extra code in them. If you create something, um, you could have like a problem where your code interacts with the preset code in, for example, game, and um, then it can start to play up and we might not understand what has been written. So that might be a problem. So we go app and then we go next down the bottom. Okay, so the product name that's going to be um, for our, our first app is going to be light, L-I-G-H-T. I'm going to use an underscore. That's really important that you don't use spaces because that can cause some errors. So it's either all one word um, using camel case, in which case you do lowercase light um, storyboards. Or if you don't like how that looks, you're more than welcome to use snake case where you use an underscore instead and then you can do the capital L. So it's up to you, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use this way, which is camel case. The organization identifier for now can be stack. Our interface, very important, it's storyboards. This is the only time we're using it. After this, we won't use it again. Language is Swift, and all of these checkboxes are not selected. That's really important as well. Then hit next again. I'm just going to move myself over here. Next, and it's going to ask where you want to save it. So I've set up a term two folder in my OneDrive. And this create git repository must be unchecked as well. See how it's clear. That's really important because otherwise you will get an error. Go ahead and hit create. Now on that note, because I'm creating it in my OneDrive folder, that's a really good idea, but I will need to pause thinking for OneDrive um, just for a little while while we're doing this because if I don't pause it, it can cause an error because we're working on the files as we're going and OneDrive doesn't really know what to do with it. So we just pause thinking for now. Now again, this might take a little minute and it'll create all the files for you, it'll set everything up. So this should look familiar. You might have um, seen this from last year. So we've got our light um, storyboards project and we're gonna go down to this main file. It has like a pencil and a paintbrush, it's like an orange file. So click on main. Now when you're doing Swift um, storyboards as we're doing now, you kind of first create the user interface as you think it should look in a static file. You have to set up all of the constraints and everything like that, the measurements. And then the second part is then to program the action, so like what it will do. So to begin with, I'm going to use this little button on the side here that's going to hide my um, settings, I suppose, uh, my um, properties window. And I have this beautiful storyboard. Now you can change the storyboard down the bottom. At the moment, it's displaying for an iPhone 11. I think it's fine, so I'm going to leave it, but you can change your device type. It's up to you. And at the top here as well, this is when you're building and running, you can change that as well. I suggest keeping the device here, matching the device down here. It doesn't really matter for now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press the green, start the active scheme button. Actually, this is not green, this is black. I think it used to be green. It's the play button. And what it's gonna do up here, you can see the progress. So it's going to build it and then eventually run it on what we call a simulator, which is like a bit of a launch pad. You can see it opening up here. And it will take a very long time, quite a bit of your 
If not, you can just tap on that. Find the button and then click and hold and drag it and drop it anywhere into this interface. I'm just going to drop it somewhere off center. Fit that up with some constraints. So I want it to basically be the, the whole width of the screen on the iPhone. So to do that, I select my button and I use this little tool down here, which is an add new constraints button. And it's going to set the constraints to, by measuring to the nearest neighbor. And in our case, we're going to constrain to margins, which means basically the edges of the app, because there's nothing else there. So our constraints, we're going to go zero, 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 zero. And you can see that these are actually selected. So they're highlighted. When you click on it, it disables it. So I want to click on it and keep them enabled. So we're getting zero pixels from the edge. So basically, the button is going to be the size of the full screen. You hit add full constraint. There you go. And your button is very large. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double tap on my button and you can see that it changes. Now I can actually add text or change this to tap me or something like that. I don't actually want to do that at all. I want to delete it entirely. So at the moment, there's a button. You can see it still exists. So that's pretty cool. So I'm now for part two. But I'm going to click on this paragraph up here and I'm going to go to assistance. That's going to open up my code on the right and my view on the left, my screen. Now, at the moment, you can kind of see I don't have a lot of screen space. So to make some more space, I'm going to hide this bar by clicking up here. It's going to hide that one for me. I can make this one a little bit smaller still. So if I break that, and I can make this one a little bit bigger still. So because our code is what we're working in at the moment, I'm just going to pinch to zoom out a little bit so I can see my whole interface. Not that it really matters. Now, before we go into coding, I just wanted to show you the simulator I should have loaded by now. You can see this is our app. At the moment, it's blank. There's nothing on it. But you'll notice you can actually swipe up from the bottom, and you can kind of see this is actually a fully functioning iPhone. So you can see pretty much everything that you have access to. This will mirror your Mac. So in terms of your battery life and your Wi-Fi connection, all that kind of thing will be mirrored here. Pretty cool. You can actually also use the internet to access things like the school website. And you can even use the messages to send a message. You'll find that there are two numbers to be there. One actually sends and the other one receives and vice versa. So if I go to the first one and I was to send a message to say, hello, oops, continue. Oops, it's a bit slow. And hit send, send here. And on the second message, it'll actually have received. So you can kind of start a conversation if you wanted to as part of your app design. We don't actually need many of the functions in here. We just need to see if it works on an actual phone. Now, at this stage, there's no point having this here at the moment because there's nothing in it. That's OK. I'm just going to leave it here and minimize it so it's there ready to go when I need it. So now we're going to do some coding. So jump back in here. So find about line 11 and add like a couple lines in here. First thing I'm going to do with my button, I'm going to right click. So that's the secondary, the right click. And while I'm holding that right click down, I'm going to drag across and drop it in here. So this is going to be an action to begin with. The action that is performed when you press this button should be something straightforward. So I'm going to call it button tapped. I'm going to change the type to button. And the event is touched up inside, which means if you tap on it, when you release your finger, when your finger lifts off the screen is when this action is triggered. It doesn't really matter for us, so we're going to leave that the same. Then hit connect. So here is your code for your IB action function tap, button tap, and I didn't actually type this, this is all generated. You notice it's a bit different to the other code and that it actually has a circle with a, and it's filled as well. That actually means it's linked to something on this interface. And if you hover over it, you'll notice that button selects too. So it's pretty cool. So now we have an action that is performed when we tap on the button. So the next thing we're going to do is create what we call an outlet. So we're going to do the same thing again, right click and drag across between line 11 and 12 this time. And this is going to be an outlet. This is going to be called my button and hit connect again. And you can now see you've got an outlet called my button, which links to that button and an IB action or interface builder action. So something that happens when we tap on that button when we trigger it. So what we're also going to do before we go too far, we're also going to add a variable um, this is going to change, so it has to be a variable rather than a constant. We're going to call this light on using camel case, and we're going to set the false. Now, realistically, 
in other programming languages, sometimes you might have to set a type as Boolean to say it's a yes, no, or true, false variable. But Swift is quite powerful. It'll infer, which means it'll basically look at this type and go, oh, yeah, no worries, it's true, false. So this has to be Boolean. So it does all the work for us, which is very handy. Now, what we're going to do when we tap our button, we're going to do a couple things. Actually, before I go too far, notice this looks like it's on three lines, but it's actually on line 16 still before line 17. This is just because my view was really large. So if you were to zoom out your view, you can kind of see it would eventually end up, if I keep zooming out, on the one um, line, which yours might look like. I've just made one really big because then I can kind of see exactly what I'm doing and if I've made any errors anywhere. So when we perform the button press, it's going to read from top to bottom. The first thing I'm going to do is toggle this light on. So I go light on. See, I can use the auto complete. It already starts suggesting. So I can tap on this or I can press the return key and I can use the arrows to select the right one. So I can go light on dot toggle and you can see there it is there. So again, I'm going to press return. So that's going to flip it. So if it's false, it's just going to set to true. And then if it's true, it's going to set back to false. So now we're very, like changing the value of it based on when we tap the button. Now, if our light is on, if that is true, then what I want to do is change the button background color. So I'm going to say my button dot background, and you can see how um, useful this uh, autocomplete is. If it doesn't show up, it might just be that your Mac is running a bit slow. You might have a few applications open at once. My button dot background color equals, I'm just going to make this a lot wider so you can kind of see, otherwise it'll be on different lines. And I'm going to choose a random color. So for me, I'm going to choose, let's go cyan. Why not? Doesn't matter what color you use. Otherwise, so notice the brackets. So if the light is on, do this thing. Otherwise, if the light is not on, is the other case, do something else. And notice this is all inside of our button tap function that starts on line 16. So if it's not going to be if the light is not on, the other color that it's going to use, I'm going to go my button dot background color is going to be, let's go purple. Why not? That's pretty much it. So now when I press the play button, it's going to refresh the app that's on the simulator for me. So you'll have to be patient. You'll have to wait for it. It won't be instant. So waiting for Xcode to build it. I'll go back here while we're waiting for it to build. updating and then it will automatically launches for us which is fantastic so at the moment here's our app and when we tap on our button it goes light on is cyan light off is purple and then it just toggles between so that's pretty cool so we have a button we have an action um, and we have an output which is the screen with changing color very cool so that's stage one um, which was basically just to get um, storyboards so what I'm going to do now I'm going to close this one and I'm going to stop tasks and in fact, I don't actually need the simulator anymore, so I'm going to quit simulating some battery life, and it's going to speed up my computer quite a significant amount. Xcode is still open, which is fantastic. If it's not, you can reopen it, or you can just click here, and it will open up a new window again. So we're going to create another Xcode project this time. So this is the second time. Same app, but this time we're going to use Swift UI. So we're going to use iOS app and hit Next. Product name, let's call this Light Swift UI. Count stays the same. Now the interface, this is where it's really important. From here on, we're just using Swift UI. We're not going to use storyboards anymore. I find storyboards, you waste a lot of time trying to set them up, whereas Swift UI does all the work for us, which is even better. Language is going to be Swift, and then these are all un unselected, still unchecked, which is good. Hit next. It's going to ask you where you want to save it. I'm going to save it into my digital tech folder. My OneDrive is still paused, which is good, and this is not selected. We never use the Git repository. Hit create. It's going to take a second, create all the files for us. It is a little bit faster when it creates these files, not a lot. And um, you get a little bit different of a view. Now, with this one, I don't need the sidebar, so I'm going to hide that. And I don't need this sidebar either at the moment, so I'm going to hide that as well. So now I have a lot of space to do some programming. I'm going to drag this over a little bit, and you can change your device. So I kind of like the iPhone, um, it doesn't really matter, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, something like that. And then and again, because you've created this file, it's going to take a second to index or find all the files and process all the changes and all that kind of thing. But when we're ready, I'm going to hit resume. And again, this actually took almost 20 minutes for some of the students. 
Okay, that took a little while, but my preview loaded with my hello world. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys when you change the text, it should actually trigger an update in the view already, which is cool because then we don't have to switch to our simulator all the time. So I could say, hello, nine digital tech, and you can actually see it starting to type, change as I type, or I could change my mind and go, hello, human, human. And then you can see over here, it's updated, which is very cool. So to change this to our um, light project, we'll still need a variable called light on, which will trigger a view update. And we'll need this text to actually be a button instead, that when you tap the button, it changes something on the view. The first thing I'm gonna do is create my variable. So I'm gonna do a at state. This will, uh, this kind of signs to Xcode that, hang on, we wanna update the view when we change this value. We're gonna make it a variable, so that means it changes rather than a constant. We're gonna call it light on, and we're gonna set it to false. And you can see the autocomplete trying to help along. So we've got our state variable light on, which is false. So the next thing we're gonna do is change the text to a button. Notice the capital B. We're gonna set an action. The action is going to be in these squiggly brackets, which means do something. That's like a function, I guess. And the thing that we want it to do is go light on dot toggle. So quite similar to our last app. Now you can see my preview has paused because we had some errors. We've still got an error, in fact. Now this is all on one line. It's just that um, I don't have a lot of space on my screen. So if I change to turn the minimap off, I've got a little bit more space. So you can see the button action light on toggle. Then what I'm gonna do is put another squiggly bracket here, and that's gonna show you like the content of the button. Now technically my view will work, but the button doesn't have anything in it. See, this is blank, so it's not actually showing anything. So it's just gonna be like an invisible button, which is not very useful. So I'm gonna change this to say if, the light is on, put some text in, and I'm going to use emojis. So control, command, spacebar will open up the emoji keyboard for me. So that's control, command, and spacebar. And I'm gonna use my monkey face if the light is on. And I'm gonna add a modifier. So I'm gonna go font, this, I'm gonna go size, and I'm gonna set it to 200 um, pixels, I suppose is here. So it's gonna be a really large piece of text with one emoji on it if the light is on. So this is gonna happen if the light's on. So then what I wanna do is an else statement. If the light is not on, I'm gonna do the same text. So I'm gonna copy and paste it down here. But I'm gonna change this using control, come up and space bar to the one with the face closed. So you can kind of see how it looks here. So if the light's on, it's open face. If it's closed, it's covered face. So then when I'm happy, when I'm Ready to go, all I've got to do is use this little play button here. If I press that, the background goes gray, which is cool. And we're ready to go. So I can tap on the button and I can see the monkey face change. So it's pretty cool and you can see it's actually a lot easier and we don't have to set things like sizing and spacing and positioning and all these kind of crazy things. So it kind of gives us more creative freedom to do what we want on our app. We need to stop and then go file and then go save to make sure it's backed up. Thank you very much. The next video, um, we'll show you a little bit more, some different advanced um, things that we can do in our Swift UI. Um, so they're kind of like little libraries that you can then copy and paste in here, and you can change what's in your body of your app and how it displays.